I spend a lot of time in my shop around dust particles and various chemicals. So when Membrane Solutions offered to send over their MSA3 air purifier, I thought I would try it out. The replaceable 3-in-1 filter includes a pre-filter, an H13 true HEPA filter, and an activated carbon filter. Not only can this air purifier help remove more than 99% of dust, pollen, mold, bacteria, and other airborne particles, but it also helps reduce the VOCs in the shop from using various chemicals. If you're looking for a great product to help breathe cleaner air in your home or in your shop, I'll link this product in the description as well as a discount code for 15% off. My name is Barry and welcome to Mad City Modern. This old table is obviously in rough shape, and once restored, it probably still won't be worth much. It's made mostly from pine, making this the perfect piece for me to practice a new finishing technique. So then what's with all the drawings, the shoestrings, and even a pushpin? You see, after a while, if you've watched enough furniture videos, in one sense they all start looking the same. So when I first started my furniture channel, I spent a lot of time trying to mimic the successful video styles of other YouTubers. But I soon realized that I was more interested in telling some of the stories behind these furniture pieces. So as I focus on the stories, perhaps in 10 or 15 years when I look back on some of these videos, I may not agree completely with some of the trends at the time, but I don't think I'll ever regret sharing other people's stories. I don't know much about this old farmhouse table, but I did have a chance to talk to the gentleman who was placing these items on the side of the road that day. He grew up in this old farmhouse that had belonged to his parents. After many years of good use, this old table was eventually replaced with newer furniture, and so the old table was placed up in the attic for many years. Back then, many families didn't often throw away anything, so when the attic was eventually cleaned out, some of this furniture ended up in the old barn. The legs on this table are attached with a simple hanger bolt, a bracket, and a nut. This is a very common assembly for many furniture pieces. The skirt is attached with four simple screws, so I'll remove those next. What's unique about this table is that it's obvious at some point the children were allowed to be creative in their own ways. This old table reminded me of when I was just eight years old and my father would bring home old typewriters from work. I would carefully disassemble them by using mostly the claw end of this hammer. Over the years, they would attach this decorative tablecloth and they would use the drawer as a way to keep score for whatever game they were playing. This old tablecloth appears to have been secured by using adhesive and several nails. There are certainly better tools for removing these old nails, but for now, I'll use what I have. Oftentimes, simple furniture like this was handmade, but these markings indicate this table was likely manufactured. This is the first time that I've had to remove material like this from an old piece of furniture, and I imagined that it would be a nightmare, but it really didn't turn out to be too bad, as you'll see in a moment. 
There may be a lot of tools necessary for refinishing furniture, but if you're just starting out, this is the number one tool I would strongly suggest investing in. This is a two and a half inch carbide scraper, and I use this tool on just about every single project. Whether you restore old furniture or paint old furniture, this carbide scraper is a great tool for removing most of the old finishes. By applying gentle, consistent pressure, you can remove most of the old finishes and cut down on wasting so much paint stripper. A few of the rusty nail heads broke off, so the rest of the nail is embedded in the tabletop. I'll do my best to punch these out and remove the nails. Once again, there are better tools for removing nails like this, but this process worked okay. I'll continue removing the old finishes with the carbide scraper, and it's important to note that it's not necessary to completely remove the finishes. The sanding process should remove the remainder. One of the reasons for working on a simple project like this is for me to try a new finishing technique. For the new finish, I'll start by sanding the table with 150 grit sandpaper and work my way up to 220 grit. I'll sand the large surface areas with the random orbital sander and finish by working on the details with the surf prep sander. While working through the grits, in this case 150 grit to 220 grit sandpaper, it's important in between to remove all the small dust particles. This should help the sanding process be more efficient. While working on these projects, I'll do my best to continue a segment I'll call This Week in the Mail. So thank you to all of you who have continued to show support in many ways on the channel. This Week in the Mail, several postcards, letters, and Amazon wishlist gifts. I appreciate all of your support. And a special thank you to all the new patrons on the channel. The skirt and drawer support for this table are held together with four simple brackets. Completely disassembling a furniture piece and the hardware like this, specifically the screws, are often a good indication regarding the age of your furniture. The drawer has a few broken sections, and so I'll completely disassemble that as well. And since it is pine, a much softer wood, securing this just prevents further damage. All of the links for the tools used in this video will be linked in the video description below. Whenever I find furniture like this, I do my best to ask the previous owner about its history, and sometimes I don't find out much at all. But sometimes there are obvious clues regarding the history of some of this furniture. And if you don't know some of the specific details, then it maybe allows you to reimagine some of your own memories. To be completely honest, I wondered if a piece like this with all the unique drawings should be left alone. Perhaps if it had been left alone, maybe the table would have just been picked up and eventually ended up in the landfill. It's hard to say. There really aren't any written rules about antique and vintage furniture. So what I try to do is enough work to bring a piece back to life so that maybe it can be used once again. And in some way, find a way to preserve some of its history. Pine is usually cheap and easy to work with, so I'll make up a new side for this drawer. I'm not much of a woodworker, so I don't use a table saw often. This old table saw doesn't meet many of the new safety standards, so please don't do as I do and consider carefully following the safety guidelines for all the power equipment that you're operating. I 
I haven't been showing this much in my videos, but for the last six months, I've been using this surf prep sander, and this has been a great addition to the shop. This specific sander is not cheap, but if you do a lot of furniture refinishing, this is truly a game changer. With the softer, interchangeable, sponge-like pads, this enables me to sand detailed areas without damaging the furniture. Many of you have already purchased this surf prep sander through my video links, so once again, I'll link the product with the discount code in this video description. I often get asked why I don't just skip scraping and go right to the sanding process, and this would be why. Sanding the old finishes before scraping can waste a lot of good sandpaper. Once I've sanded most of the body of this table, it's time to move on to the part that I've been dreading the most with this project, and that would be the detailed legs. Once again, I'll scrape as much of the old finishes as possible using the carbide scraper. I'll then use the surf prep sander with the sponge-like pad. This is the perfect practice piece to try these steps without worrying about causing too much damage. Sanding the detailed areas with this surf prep sander will not yield perfection, but this is one of the main reasons why I was interested in this specific sander. There are some furniture purists out there who don't agree with using any power tools when restoring vintage and antique furniture. I can understand that thought process, however, spending several hours to completely hand sand all these detailed legs would not make sense on such a cheap furniture piece like this one. Using this method to sand the legs like this will not yield perfection, but I'm still happy with the outcome. The brackets, screws, and other hardware on the underside of this table may never be seen, but I still want to spend a few moments to clean these up. It's important to note that getting your fingers this close to the wheel can appear to be risky. It certainly doesn't feel good to get your fingers caught, but this machine doesn't have enough power to do significant damage. As much as possible, I'd like to use the original screws and nails for this table, so I'll splice off a splinter from some scrap wood and start filling some of these screw holes. This should just allow for a much tighter fit. I'll drill some new pilot holes and put the drawer back together using the original nails. This furniture design in many ways is very primitive, so I'm not worried about perfect lines. Before I apply the new finishes, I'll simply cut out a new base for this drawer. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of finish options out there, so the choice is up to you. In this case, I didn't use the Van Dyke Brown as shown here. I just mixed half of Provincial and half of Greystone of the General Finishes water base wood stain. I've seen a lot of whitewashes and other paint washes on natural pine. If you're new to the channel, I recently refinished a pine dresser that had been painted yellow. I bleached the pine, then added a clear top coat to the entire dresser. The idea with most of these finishes is to reduce that natural orange color that pine often has. I'm hoping to give this table a natural, rustic look, and by mixing the colors, I hope to add some depth to the overall finish. Pine is a much softer wood and is often porous, so when applying your new finish, the results can sometimes look blotchy. When I first applied this stain wash, I was afraid it was too dark, but I just had to be patient and trust the process. Once I apply the stain, I'll wipe the excess immediately with a damp rag. I ended up adding two coats of stain wash to this table, and I'm still not sure if that was the right decision. For the final top coat, or the protective finish, I'll apply General Finish's water-based top coat. This is the water-based high performance in flat. There are several methods you could use to apply the top coat. For this project, I'll use a foam brush. 
I learned a lot from this project and I'll continue to experiment with stain washing in preparation for a much larger furniture piece. Working on furniture can be difficult and things don't always work out the way that we hope. Quite often old furniture pieces are thrown to the curb, but there are sometimes clues that may tell one last story. And for a brief moment in time, it's a wonderful opportunity to reflect and to revisit those special moments shared with the loved ones many of us have lost. So if you find a way to keep a simple memory alive, take the opportunity.